Hey all y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie. This is where I talk about knitting, my tips, my tricks, my opinions, and my preferences. And I got a juicy one today. I'm gonna share with you why I prefer English knitting over continental knitting. The tea is hot on this topic. So if you're interested in this, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let's share some knit tea. What I'm about to share today is my own personal preference and subjective take on English style versus continental knitting. How you like to knit, what your preferred method is, is highly, highly personal. But I've been hinting at doing, not even hinting, I've been saying I was gonna do this video forever, so you know, I'm going to sit down and do it. <laughs> I'm doing it, I'm collecting my thoughts, and I'm putting them in one place. But um, if you are a continental knitter and you're like, heck no, I, I totally disagree with you on all of this, hey, I get it. All that being said, let's get into the specific reasons why I think English is better than continental. I'm gonna knit one row of English style knitting. And in English knitting, what you do is you hold the yarn in your right hand, and your right hand is throwing the yarn around the needle. There are variations of English style knitting. I do what's called lever knitting. In knitting, we talk a lot about achieving good, even tension, and there's a lot of things and factors that go into achieving good, even tension, but I think one that we absolutely have the most control over as we're knitting is maintaining an even tension on the working yarn as you wrap it. This is where I always have concentrated on keeping like a good even tension on the yarn and I can feel it in my right hand. I can feel that I'm holding that yarn with the same tension every time I wrap. Notice too, this is just a little tip if you're starting to learn how to knit. When I first started learning how to knit, I had a tendency to wrap my yarn, make the stitch, and then pull the yarn again. You don't need to do that. I just wrap the yarn, pull it through the old stitch, and make my new stitch without any extra tugging of the working yarn. Now, in continental knitting, you're not throwing the yarn or flicking the yarn like you do in English style knitting. Notice how I tension the yarn, first of all. I do it over my pinky and then over my forefinger like this. And I have to hold this yarn with between my pinky and my forefinger is what is tensioning this yarn. And I try to hold it with the same amount of tension. But my left hand doesn't do any of the wrapping. Instead, my right needle is coming in to the stitch and then picking up the yarn and pulling it through. So it's more of, a, it's not more of, it's called picking. It's a picking motion like this. If you're at all familiar with doing crochet, this kind of thing is gonna feel very familiar and similar in the way that you're going in and using your tool to grab the yarn and pull it through. And I have to say, I think the knit stitch in Continental is just as easy to do as the knit stitch in English style knitting. My only thing about it is I feel like I have to be more cognizant that I'm really keeping that tension even as I'm working the stitch because I'm not directly controlling the yarn as it's getting wrapped around the right needle. Keeping that yarn tensioned evenly as I'm knitting is just not as easy in Continental, I find. The differences, the why I prefer English versus Continental with the knit stitch are pretty subtle differences. And if all you ever did was a knit stitch, I kind of be like, you know, it's a coin flip, which one you like better. I do think that doing the knit stitch in Continental is prettier. <laughs> like it's, it's prettier to watch. I watch people knit on camera and people who do Continental knitting, I watch them do the knit stitch on camera and I just, I'm like, man, it's just so pretty because it is a very fluid motion when you do Continental knitting. Um, 
with the knit stitch, it's a very fluid motion. Whereas English knitting, it's a much more stepped process. You know, there are definite steps to it. Um, but yeah, I think that for me, the big reason at the end of the day that I do prefer English style over continental when doing the knit stitch is I feel like I'm just able to more directly and easily control the tension of my working yarn as I'm wrapping the stitch because I'm directly wrapping the stitch and you can feel it in your right hand you know in your right hand when you you know, that tension has changed just a little bit a lot of times you can tell that it's happened and then you can give a little extra tug to make sure that the stitch stays evenly tensioned whereas with my when I'm doing continental knitting with the knit stitch it doesn't feel like I have that same direct control over it. Um, so anyway, that's my opinion. Next, let's talk about the purl stitch because the purl stitch is where I think English knitting is hands down just plain better, all right? And I, yes, it's an opinion, but I think it's an opinion backed up by objective facts. So I'm going to work a row of purl stitches with English style knitting. Notice that my hand, when I do this, moves in the same counterclockwise motion as when I do a knit stitch. I'll show you. Here's me doing a knit stitch. Here's me doing a purl stitch. My hand moves the same way. I'm going to demo for you how I first learned how to do the, the purl stitch in continental. Yarn is to the front, my needle goes behind the right leg through to the front of the work. Now I've got to get that yarn wrapped around this needle. And it's just not going to happen easily while wrapping the stitch counterclockwise. So how I was taught to do this was to take my forefinger basically and push down on the yarn so that then I could grab the yarn and pull it through. So you're doing that motion. That motion that I was just doing to do with purl stitches with Continental is completely different than how you do a knit stitch. And I absolutely hate it. Rowing out is when your purl stitches and your knit stitches have such a difference in tension, a gap forms between two rows, okay? A lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of time continental knitters struggle more with throwing out than English knitters. Like, this is anecdotal evidence, <laughs> just anecdotally what I've seen, and I think that struggle of getting even tension between your knits and your purls is directly related to the fact that when you do a purl stitch in continental knitting, it's such a different motion than the knit stitch that it's just really hard to have even tension. Like, it's much easier to achieve even tension between your knits and your purls and your English knitting because your hand motion is the same. And I think that is why English style knitting has it all over continental knitting. Now, there are other ways of doing the purl stitch in continental knitting where you don't do this. I've seen continental knitters who um, basically just throw who pretty much just throw their yarn, like when they're doing this. I'm not doing it well because it's not something I've ever really done myself. Something else that people try to do to make the purl stitch easier to do in Continental is to do what's called a Norwegian purl, aka the lazy purl. And in that, you actually, you keep the yarn to the back of the work and you bring the right needle underneath it and through as if you're going to purl. But what you do is you take your right needle and you bring it back to the back of the needle while staying in the stitch, grab the yarn, and then bring it through like that. It's a nifty way to do the purl stitch because you are able to keep the yarn to the back of the work and it's really nice for doing um, one by one ribbing because you're able to keep the yarn to the back of the work the entire time. The big problem with the Norwegian Pearl is uh, <laughs> you're really stretching that stitch on your left needle quite a bit. If you're working cotton yarn, 
doing a Norwegian pearl is less than ideal. You kind of, it works better if you're doing yarn that it's more elastic, like a wool yarn is, but it's definitely something you can do. And it's something I definitely have utilized in my life when doing one by one ribbing. The way that I actually do the purl stitch when I knit continental is actually to utilize combo knitting, also called Russian speed knitting. And all combo knitting is, is you wrap the yarn counterclockwise when you're doing your knit stitches, and you wrap the yarn clockwise when doing your purl stitches. So it looks like this. Um, and yeah, it's just a very easy picking motion, just like the knit stitch. Um, it's easier to do the purl stitch. The motion is more similar between the knit and the purl stitch. Um, and the yarn takes a shorter path around the knitting needle. So that helps fix any tension issues that might exist between the knit and the purl stitch. And you're probably going, well, if it's so great, why doesn't everyone just use combo knitting? When you wrap your yarn clockwise around the needle, the right leg, which is this leg right here of the stitch, is behind the needle. Normally when you're wrapping your yarn counterclockwise, that right leg is to the front of the needle. When you use combo knitting, you quote unquote knit through the back leg when you're doing your knit stitches. And then when you do your purl stitches, you're knitting through the front leg. And you also have to be aware in combo knitting of how that stitch mount affects how you create right and left leaning decreases. If you really understand how stitch mount affects increases and decreases and everything, you don't think a whole lot about it, but there's a little bit of a learning curve there um, because you're doing things differently than what's standard. So pearl stitch, that to me is the big problem with continental knitting. And yes, there's workarounds for it, but English knitting, I could just knit. <laughs> I think the one area that continental knitting does have a leg up on English knitting is ribbing. So let's take a look at ribbing real quick. I'm going to just do a one by one rib here. So um, I knit one, then I have to bring the yarn from the back of the work to the front of the work. And you do that by making sure that you bring the yarn between the needles to the front of the work. And then I do my purl stitch. Then I have to move the yarn back to do the knit stitch. So I do the stitch, then I bring the yarn forward, do my purl stitch, bring the yarn back, do the knit stitch, bring my yarn forward, do the purl stitch, bring my yarn back. Any rib pattern or a pattern that utilizes a combination of knits and purls, like um, seed stitch, for example, yeah, there's a lot more hand motion going on because you're having to move that yarn back and forth between the front of the work to the back of the work and vice versa. Now in continental knitting, unless you're using a Norwegian purl, you are having to move the yarn back and forth between the um, front of the work to the back of the work, but it is easier. To move the yarn to the front of the work, I'm just going to bring my hand forward and that drags the yarn <laughs> with it. And then I can do my purl. The yarn just sort of naturally follows your hand, your right hand as your right hand is inserting the needle. If you do continental combo style knitting, ribbing, it's pretty easy and you get really nice results. And that is the one situation where I do think continental has advantages over English style knitting. But like I said at the beginning of the video, if it was English versus continental death match, two styles of knitting enter, one style survives, hands down for me, it is English style knitting all the way. And it comes back to the same thing. The hand motion of doing a knit stitch versus a purl stitch is the same. I don't have to think about it at all. That is a huge advantage in terms of being able to get good even tension. The other thing that I just really enjoy more about it is I can just, I feel like I'm able to control the tension of the working yarn more easily when I'm doing English knitting versus continental knitting.
Those are really the two big reasons why. And if you are a continental knitter and you struggle with that pearl, maybe give English style knitting a go. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's okay. Plenty, <laughs> trust me, plenty of English knitters get the message all the time that we should be knitting continental and that we should switch. And somehow you're a better knitter if you're a continental knitter. And that's part of the reason actually I wanted to even do this video. I'm going to go off on a little bit of a rant here. I think something that needs to stop in the knitting community is this notion that continental knitting is faster and more efficient and that people who knit English style are using an inferior method of knitting. Um, I, I see it in groups all the time. I'm an English knitter. I'm trying to learn knit continental because of it's faster, it's more efficient, whatever. But I feel like there's always this subtext of it's better. It's better because it's faster. It's not necessarily faster, okay? It's not. It's better because it's more efficient. What does that even mean? To me, doing the pearl stitch in English knitting is more efficient, whatever that means. I don't even know what that means in terms of it's more efficient. I, I don't, um, I don't know. And I don't know if that's been objectively studied. I'd love to see a scientific paper on that. I would never, ever, ever tell a continental knitter. I, if they were happy with how they're knitting, I would never tell them, you know, I really think continental. It's like, you really should learn English. Mm, no. And let's be honest, that is a message that English style knitters get all the time of like, oh my God, English, oh, you know, that's not as fast. That's not as fast as efficient as continental knitting. I think there's just this stabbiness that has really grown up around continental knitting that it doesn't need to exist. We should just appreciate both styles of knitting because they both have their pros and cons. And if someone is happy knitting English style, that should just be celebrated. Be like, great, you're knitting. That's wonderful. You're getting such good results. That's great. That's all that should matter. That's all that should freaking matter. But no, you get shopkeepers telling my, my sister-in-law, oh, but continental knitting is so much better. Is it, or is it just better for you? If you want to learn how to knit continental for whatever reason, great. Learn how to knit continental. I'm really glad that I know how to use that skill. Um, I apply it in situations all the time. It's not how I would want to knit 100% of the time, but it's definitely a skill I'm glad I have. But yeah, that's me. Lover style knitting, all English style, lover style knitting all the way for the win, ride or die. That is how I love to knit. How about you? What's your favorite way of knitting? Do you think I have it completely wrong about continental knitting and I just don't understand how to do it? Um, do you agree with me that it's time that English style knitters were just not pressured about continental knitting? Let me know in the comments down below. I do read comments. I do respond to them. Also, if you want to carry on the conversation on social media, you can find all my social media in the description box below. I also have a Facebook page um, for this YouTube channel. It is at Knits Where It's At. Check it out. Give it a like. I have a group that I'm starting. If you want to join that Facebook group, just head on over to the Facebook page. Also, I'm so excited. I ported over my blog to a new platform that I think is a little more robust and gives me a little bit more control over the layout of everything. And that blog is a really good place to just kind of find out what's going on with the channel, what videos I'm planning, um, any changes that have gone on. For example, if you've been following the Knitting Fundamental series, you might have noticed there hasn't been a video in that for a while. And I kind of discuss where I am at with the Knitting Fundamental series at the blog. So if you want to find out about that, go check that out today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your knitting friends. Help people find me and go, hey, She's fun. She's a good person in the knitting world to talk with. Like, check her out. I, I would love to grow this channel. 
I would actually really love to get to 100 subscribers. Um, that's my goal right now because when I get to 100 subscribers, I can actually get a personalized YouTube <laughs> name. So I can be youtube.com slash geek. That would be like amazing, but I gotta get to 100 subscribers before I can get a personalized um, YouTube link like that. If you wanna help me get to 100 subscribers, first, make sure that you hit subscribe and the notification bell, which will let you know whenever I upload a new video, and tell your other knitting friends about this space. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this, and as always, happy knitting. Bye. Tea's getting hot. Hot tea, hot tea, hot knit and tea, getting real. I'm gonna delve into a testy topic. <laughs> Where did that come from? I have no idea. We got a good one today, I think, because we're gonna. That's recording. Okay, everything's recording. <laughs> I wanna get through an entire video where I don't look up and go, oh my gosh, I need to record something. Anyway, perfect. Nailed it. Ba, 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 boom. Feeling good for the first time in a while. Stay at this last. Ay, ay, ay. My coffee cup just spilled. I am team English style knitting, specifically leather. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and that's what I'm at. That's what I believe. Anyway. <laughs>